Welcome to Exhibition and Xbox Podcast Episode 2. My name is Samuel Adams, and before we dive into the hottest Xbox news from around the industry, I did want to say a word of thanks. For those that are new to the channel or to the show, it's amazing to see the support for Exhibition so far. Episode 0 and Episode 1 were very well received. You guys seem to love the show, and I am going to keep it going. On top of that, a little bit of a teaser for weeks ahead. I've got some pretty cool interviews that are coming, and more that I am lining up in the days to come. So, stay excited, stay pumped. A lot of cool stuff coming here on Exhibition. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the hottest gaming news of the week. Let's go ahead and kick things off with the conversation around Biomutant because that's what's on everyone's mind at the time of making this video. In fact, Biomutant is actually trending on Twitter and unfortunately it's not trending because of its gameplay or because of the quality of the experience itself, both of which are worth trending in my opinion. I have not had hands on time with the game, but I did make a video earlier this week giving my impressions of the gameplay that has been shown off, and it's one of my most anticipated games of the summer after checking out what the developers are bringing to the table. Unfortunately, it's trending because Biomutant runs better on the Xbox Series X than on the PlayStation 5 as revealed by some gameplay, and both of these YouTube videos in question are up right now on the THQ Nordic YouTube channel. In short, there is a disclaimer at the beginning of the PlayStation 5 video that says, quote, The footage you are about to see has been captured on a retail PS5. With this build, the option for native 4K on PlayStation has been deactivated due to stability and performance related reasons. What you see here is 1080p at 60 frames per second, upscaled to 4K at 60 frames per second. It will remain deactivated for the release version too. It will not be a native current gen experience. More information on that will follow soon, though. In short, what you have here is the Xbox Series X version of the game being available at launch and the PlayStation 5 version of the game coming in a few weeks or a few months. The timeline on that has not yet been revealed. But a lot of fans have been up in arms about this, and I hesitate to share this kind of stuff on the podcast because I really don't want to give these guys oxygen, so I'm going to blur out the actual name and the profile picture of this person. But on Twitter, you see the comment, Biomutant devs got paid to pull the 4K update for PS5. Microsoft has no games, and so with PS5 being forced to play the game in PS4 Pro mode, shill sites like Digital Foundry will have a great time saying how much better it looks on Xbox. I will not buy slash support devs who do this. This was not a direct reply to this conversation, but a lot of other people were echoing this kind of sentiment. A lot of PlayStation fans were just generally upset about the fact that the game was not going to be running as well at launch, and THQ Nordic tweeted and shared, quote, we are not AAA, and the studio behind Biomutant consists of only 20 people. They have been working very hard on this game for the last years. You don't have to like the final product, but please don't question their skill or dedication to the game. This comment from THQ Nordic comes in a reply to another Twitter user who was essentially calling out the developers and saying that if they truly wanted to make the game the next generation experience that it deserves to be on the PlayStation 5, that they would have gone the extra mile and it shows that they aren't truly dedicated to the game. None of that's true. This is a game of 20 people working on a game that was revealed in 2017, if I remember correctly, announced in 2016, I think. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that in the comment section down below. But they've been hard at work on this game for a number of years, and to question the dedication of the team is just uncalled for. That's not something that we really need to bring into the conversation. I'll have both of these videos linked down below if you want to compare the PlayStation 5 version to the Xbox Series X version. But what I want to drive home here is that these two videos aren't PlayStation 5 versus Xbox Series X. I think that's the biggest takeaway here. This is effectively last generation versus next generation. And I think that in a way, this is kind of on THQ Nordic uh, for portraying it in this way, because while the game is launching on the PlayStation 5, it should be made very apparent that the PlayStation 5 version of the game is not ready. That seems to be the buried lead here. And it's weird to not come out and say that, in my opinion. Just my two cents on it. I would love to hear what you have to say in the comments section down below. Or you can hit me up on Twitter and share your thoughts there. But no matter how you cut it, 
I'm very interested in Biomutant. This is a game that immediately went from one that was at the bottom of the list to pretty much in the top 10 of the games that I do want to play this year. I mean, you've got inspirations from Ratchet and Clank, Batman Arkham, Devil May Cry, all of that blending together in this beautiful open world that's eight kilometers by eight kilometers. It's one that I think I'm going to check out this summer. So if you want to dive in again, the game is launching on May 25th, one of the biggest games of next week. So you can go ahead and check that out. Let's go ahead and bounce back to another topic from last week, and that is Starfield, because it seems that we have a potential release time frame from Jason Schreier over at Bloomberg. The Bloomberg reporter tweeted, quote, Let me make this very clear. Bethesda's plan is to tease a release date for Starfield at E3. That date is in late 2022. I'll leave the specifics to them. But please keep your expectations in check and refrain from sending death threats when the other rumors turn out to be false. End quote. First and foremost, totally agree with this. There is nothing in the gaming industry that is ever announced, released, or teased, or canceled that deserves any kind of death threat towards a developer, a reporter, a PR person, a social media manager. You never need to do any of that because that's completely and totally uncalled for. At the end of the day, it's just a video game. That's really what this entire industry boils down to. However, I will also say expectations are getting out of control for this game. The last time that I saw excitement around a game like I'm seeing with Starfield, I think you know where I'm going with this, Cyberpunk 2077. I'm not saying the game is going to be bad. I am not saying that this game is going to be another Cyberpunk, but a lot of people are talking about the pedigree of Bethesda. A lot of people are talking about the past games they have released, and I feel like a lot of people are forgetting that with every Bethesda game, there is a certain level of jank that is kind of expected. And if you're looking for this revolutionary next generation experience, you could get it. You could get something that shakes the very foundation of the gaming industry. You could get something that is revolutionary on an incredibly high level, but you can also get something that is not. And I think what it really should boil down to is that we have not seen anything significant about Starfield yet. We do not have any kind of release time frames. We do not have any kind of gameplay that has literally been shown off by the developers. We have no official screenshots, although we have seen a couple of leaks. What it ultimately boils down to is that we know literally nothing about this game outside of a splash screen at an E3 a couple of years ago. So keep your expectations in check. I'm just saying we don't want to have another repeat of what happened with Cyberpunk 2077. All of that being said, you can probably check this game out in late 2022, according to Jason Schreier here. But again, release dates are very fluid, timeframes are very fluid, and the impact of COVID on development is also something that is going to continue reverberating in the at least next year, but potentially even years ahead, because what was missed out on in 2021 and 2020 is going to be felt in 2022 and 2023. So keep that in mind. But if you're looking forward to seeing what other big games are coming out this year, next year, and beyond, you can tune into Summer Game Fest, which returns on Thursday, June the 10th. There's a first look at more than 30 partners that have been announced from the show this week, including the likes of Activision, 2K, Blizzard. Of course, you have Epic Games, Gearbox, High res Studios, Conch Media, MiHoYo, Riot Games, Sega, Xbox, Wizards of the Coast, PlayStation, Ubisoft, Warner Bros., and more. A lot of big presentations are going to be held this summer. And on top of that, one of the biggest presentations, of course, for our community here is going to be the Xbox presentation. And that looks to be something that is going to be shared this year, according to Le Figaro. I believe I said that correctly, but it is a foreign outlet that had an interview with Xbox Game Studios head Matt Booty, who said that Bethesda and Microsoft are going to have a joint conference this year. This is very significant. Now, E3 2021 is held June 12th through the 15th, and no definitive details have been shared on when Microsoft's conference is, but to see them taking this joint approach is something that is very, very significant because it shows they are taking that $7.5 billion acquisition of ZeniMax Media and leveraging it to its fullest potential because having Xbox and Bethesda have a joint press conference shows that these two companies are intertwined. These two companies are inseparable. These two companies are the same because effectively they are. 
That's something that's difficult for a lot of PlayStation players to accept, and that's something that's difficult for a lot of players in general to accept, because Bethesda has for so long been this independent entity, but you really want, if you're on the Microsoft side of the fence, to have Bethesda almost synonymous with Microsoft. You want to think about Bethesda games when you think about Xbox, and there are plenty of other experiences that a lot of players think about whenever they do think about the world of Xbox. You've got Halo, you've got Gears, you've got Forza, but now with this major acquisition, you've got Elder Scrolls, you've got Fallout, you've got Starfield. These are big names that you want to directly associate with your brand. And on top of that, uh, something that Chloe Wadier, I believe I said her name correctly, uh, points out here on Twitter. Of course, she is the one that conducted the interview with Matt Booty over on Le Figaro. Uh, but she says that the objective is to highlight Game Pass and the Bethesda games that are going to be on Game Pass on day one. And I think that's very, very significant. That is something that should not be understated. Because if you are able to have a sizzle reel trailer for Starfield, and then you say late 2022 as the release date for Starfield, and then you have another splash screen that comes up, day one Game Pass, that's very, very powerful. Because if you're someone that has an Xbox Series X or an Xbox Series S, you probably have an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate membership. And so with that membership, not only do you get access to Xbox Live and Games with Gold, but you get access to the Game Pass Ultimate Library across mobile, PC, and Xbox. And you don't just have these little 2-bit games either. You have huge experiences industry-shaking experiences like Starfield and the rest of the big Bethesda games that are coming on day one. That's massive, and that is the experience you want to drive home as what you get when you choose Xbox. Because I think a lot of people are looking at this E3 to choose where they go for the next generation. If you bought a console in the first six months of the console life cycle, you're on the bleeding edge of technology in the gaming industry. And you probably already knew what console you wanted. For me, I knew that I wanted an Xbox Series X. I'll get a PlayStation 5 at some point in the next couple of years when these big exclusives like Returnal and Spider-Man Miles Morales have dropped in price a bit and there's a big back catalog that I can go back to and play because right now as it stands, there's nothing that I'm dying to play on PlayStation 5. So I'll wait for that. But if you bought a PlayStation 5, you were probably a very hardcore PlayStation 4 fan in the last generation of consoles. And so now we're getting to this point where the general public is starting to get availability of a console. It's becoming a more normal occurrence to find Xbox Series X's and S's out in the wild. PlayStation 5's are starting to crop up more and more. And so now you have those that might just be interested in getting a new gaming console. You would still consider them to be very active members of the gaming community, but perhaps they're not watching this podcast. Perhaps they're not really as invested. This is when they begin to shape their purchasing decisions and and that is whenever they begin to choose where they want to go. Because if the experience that Microsoft provides, if the experience that Microsoft portrays is enticing enough, you will see people begin to replicate that shift that we saw at the beginning of the last generation, where when it came to PS3 and Xbox 360, Xbox 360 was the place to be. Now, PlayStation 3 saw a huge resurgence towards the end of that console's generation, but the Xbox 360 defines that generation of consoles. Then going into the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One generation, you saw a complete and total fumble by Microsoft when it comes to the messaging around the Xbox One, and it was just, quite frankly, much less powerful hardware. And so a lot of Xbox 360 players shifted over to the PlayStation 4. Now, going into the next generation of consoles, or what would technically be considered current generation of consoles, uh, you see that potential shift again, because right now, Xbox Series X and S are very enticing. There is a lot to love here, and there's a lot to look forward to. The PlayStation 5, equally enticing. Very good piece of hardware over there as well. And so you see a lot of people that are simply making a purchase decision. And it is the job of the Xbox marketing team. It's the job of the game studios teams to entice people to come over to the world of Xbox. And in my opinion, I think they're doing a pretty good job because you see a lot of potential throughout this entire generation. 
So stay tuned, E3 coming June 12th through the 15th, and Xbox is going to be one of many presentations that is showing off what this year has to offer, and on top of that, giving a glimpse as to what is to come. If you're looking for a new experience from Rockstar this year, you probably shouldn't look forward to Grand Theft Auto 6 because reports share that it's still in very early development. But if you're looking for more Grand Theft Auto 5, boy, do I have some news for you. That game is getting ported to its third generation of consoles now, and it comes to Xbox Series X and S on November the 11th alongside a release on the PlayStation 5. This news comes from a Newswire update from Rockstar that shares more about Grand Theft Auto Online and Red Dead Online. I won't be diving into that, but on top of those two announcements, they also share that Grand Theft Auto 5 and Grand Theft Auto Online are arriving on November the 11th to the newest generation of consoles. They say, quote, as an added bonus, this summer's updates to GTA Online will include special benefits for players to take advantage of in these expanded and enhanced versions when they drop. Plus, in honor of the upcoming 20th anniversary of the genre-defining Grand Theft Auto 3, we'll have even more fun surprises to share, including some specifically for GTA Online players. One thing I do want to point out here is that there is a three-month exclusivity to PlayStation 5 players for GTA Online, the standalone version of the game. So keep that in mind for those that are still playing on Xbox. You won't be able to dive in at launch on that standalone Grand Theft Auto Online version of the game. But the rest of it is coming out on November the 11th. This game launched in September of 2013. On November 11th of 2021, Grand Theft Auto 5 comes out yet again. And I think it's important to note that Rockstar is going beyond a simple port. This is going to try and create this, again, defining experience that you saw on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One and bring that forward yet again to impress players and entice more people to come back and buy this game because Grand Theft Auto 6 is reportedly still in early development. So keep that in mind. The legs on Grand Theft Auto 5 are unlike anything else, and I guarantee you, that even though this game has sold millions and millions and millions of copies and has been in the top 10 for years at a time, it will still regain its position as the best-selling game of the month, if I did have to guess. Now, I do think that sales might begin to dip a bit because people are starting to kind of get used to having Grand Theft Auto V there, and they probably already have it, uh, but... To be fair, I still think it's going to be a very, very big, strong seller for Rockstar in 2021 with this new update. So again, you can check that out in November of 2021, dropping on the 11th on the Xbox Series X and the S. Let's go ahead and dive into the biggest new additions to Xbox Game Pass as announced this week. A lot of these are out now, and a lot of these are coming in the week ahead throughout the rest of May. And of course, if you want the entire breakdown, you can head over to the Xbox Wire and get the entire 5x3 grid of games as you see right here and their breakdowns and descriptions. But coming soon, you have SnowRunner, Cloud Console, and PC. Peggle 2 on the cloud alongside Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville, both of those included with EA Play. Secret Neighbor is coming to PC. The Catch, Carp, and Course Fishing is out on Cloud Console and PC. And The Wild at Heart is coming to Console and PC. A very nice game that one is. A very nice feel there. Hand-drawn kind of look, a handcrafted world full of charming puzzles and deep secrets. And of course, you have Knockout City coming as part of the EA Play subscription. This is one that I want to highlight for a moment. This game launched, and it is a uh, very team-based competitive game. And it's one that I personally would not have checked out if not for Game Pass. And I think that's the biggest benefit that you see a lot of these multiplayer games getting from Game Pass. It's that you automatically have a collection of players. You automatically build a community because a lot of people are just curious about this game. A lot of people are willing to dive in and give it the download and spend some time with it just to see what it's like because they already have access to it. And on top of that, between console and PC, that is a pretty solid community. So if you want to throw, catch, pass, dodge, and tackle your way to dodgeball dominance, you can check out Knockout City out now. In the days ahead, we have plenty of new games coming as well. Maneater comes to Cloud Console and PC on May the 25th. Conan Exiles comes to Cloud and Console. It's been optimized for Xbox Series X and S, and it's dropping on May 27th, alongside Fusion Frenzy and Joyride Turbo that are both coming to the cloud. Warrior 5 Mercenaries comes to console on May 27th. 
This is one that absolutely has my heart. It sounds like something that I'm going to be interested in. It's dangerous work for the elite pilots of these metal monstrosities, but that's why a power-hungry mech warrior like you came here, right? If you're looking to blast, wreck, stop, and profit, step aside. Or step inside, I should say. Don't step aside. You want to get fully invested in this. But Mech Warrior 5 is one that absolutely has caught my eye. But alongside that on PC, Slime Rancher is also dropping on May 27th, and Celasta Crown of the Magister is coming on May 27th as well to PC. Alongside Spell Force 3, Soul Harvest. Again, lots of games to dive into, and plenty of games coming to touch as well. More cloud enabled games with touch controls are coming to mobile devices, including Banjo Tooie, Call of the Sea, Genesis Noir, Narita Boy, Near Automata Become As Gods Edition, Rain on Your Parade, and Two Point Hospital. Out of this entire roster of games, Rain on Your Parade is one that is right at home for this touch-based kind of experience. On top of that, Call of the Sea is a very low-octane kind of explorative kind of experience, and I think that's one that's going to be right at home as well. And of course, there are plenty of DLC and game updates that are dropping, and you can check out all of those on the official Xbox Wire. But again, as I always say, Xbox Game Pass continues to provide, and out of everything you're seeing here on this roster, I think that I'm going to be diving into Knockout City, Man Eater, and SnowRunner first and foremost. I need to check out Fusion Frenzy. I'm kind of playing Psychonauts, and that's my classic game that I'm diving into right now. But Mech Warrior 5 is one that has caught my eye, and on the go, I'm absolutely going to play some Peggle 2. Why wouldn't I? So plenty to love here, and I'm looking forward to checking out these games in the days ahead. And with that, we wrap up this week's episode of Exhibition and Xbox Podcast. If you enjoyed the show and you liked what you heard, hit that subscribe button on YouTube or on your podcast platform of choice to get it delivered to your inbox every single Sunday. I'm looking forward to next week where I have a very special guest joining me to talk more about E3 2021, what Xbox is bringing to the table, and more. And if you want to learn more when I make that announcement of who the guest is going to be, you can follow me on Twitter at JamPackSam. But until next week, you guys have a fantastic one, enjoy yourself, and keep on playing.